Hello there, Josh here from racingtoprofit.co.uk. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. In this video, I thought I would take a look ahead to the Cheltenham Festival, which is obviously next week, with a specific look at day one, um, with the idea of highlighting a few form lines and possible horses to keep an eye on, depending on how some of the results go uh, and possible impacts through the rest of the week or um, if anything saying something of interest for the racing which is taking place on day one also this isn't necessarily um, well it isn't really a video of my thoughts on exactly what I'll be backing uh, etc because I'm uh, haven't got that far yet um, it may be worth waiting to see what the weather does uh, depending on how much rain falls Day one could be uh, fairly soft or just on the softer side of good, which I suspect is what it will be called officially anyway, like it seems to be most years. But they're, um, they're due a kind of dry week next week. So with any luck, uh, the ground dries out as the week goes on and kind of it will be, yeah, perfect racing ground, really. Um, a thing to say in general uh, before I kind of flick through some of the market principles in a supreme novices hurdle is obviously there are many reasons why horses suddenly bounce into life at Cheltenham. Uh, for some it's the grand plan of course um, but this usually uh, especially in terms of higher class racing is the best ground many of these horses will have been on for a fair few weeks and that's certainly the case with this winter where it's been fairly soft and heavy on both sides of the Irish Sea uh, so we will see horses kind of uh, improving even more for some good in the ground um, and as always they there's some horses improve for the nature of festival racing and by that I mean uh, bigger fields stronger pace and that both taps into the stamina of some horses which they haven't been able to show but of course plenty of horses have been pottering around in small fields tactical affairs where they crawl and then they sprint or they never go quick enough and some horses just simply fail to settle at some of this slower pace when you mix that in with the fact that they may have been racing in soft and heavy which could be ground which is far from ideal for certain horses you can see why um, festival conditions uh, can lead to a massive jolt and improvement of course my job and others is to try and land on uh, the horses that may do just that at a decent price um, but for this kind of video there's some kind of generalities in terms of the things I look for I'll, I'll touch on a few other bits and pieces as well as I flick through day one um, but I thought it's worthwhile just kind of trying to home in uh, or get a feel for uh, some of the form lines and how they may develop through the festival and whether or not that can help us land on some winners or not uh, but that can be applicable to both the Cheltenham Festival and um, you know racing in weeks to come because not everything uh, necessary that you might spot in this video is going to necessarily run at Cheltenham um, but yeah, do watch this with a notepad if you want. You may note down a few things. Uh, of course, we kick off with the Supreme Novices Hurdle. Um, you may have strong views on who you think is going to run well or not already. But of course, if, let's uh, say, appreciate it uh, does bolt up. Um, I know some have concerns over uh, if this does dry out a bit, whether or not something something else may have a quicker turn of foot or more gears um i assume they'll try and nullify that because he certainly looks like a a staying 16 furlong horse uh obviously um with form in the cheltenham bumper and maybe that's where i will start with um we can see here uh i mean there's a couple i just want to highlight for possible handicaps i mean Generally, with a champion bumper, it's not a bad position to start off with. Uh, that at some point, the horses that ran in it are going to show more and more at a half decent level. And you could argue the two which have yet to fully, or arguably fully yet to reach their heights. Um, both of these two have entries in handicaps this week. Third time Lucky and Esky Lane for 
Gordon Elliott will be under Denise Foster's name. I assume, I mean, that's another uh, complication into the mix in terms of how we treat those runners uh, and whether or not we just treat them the same and assume Gordon Elliott would have his usual half-decent festival until we see evidence otherwise, especially in the handicaps, which he clearly targets every year. Um, the third time lucky and Esquilet may be worth uh, a couple that may be worth just keeping an eye on um, just because they have festival form and festival form that has clearly worked out okay given what the front two uh, have gone on to do uh, and especially appreciate it um, hasn't done much wrong this season is coming into this on a hat trick uh, was pretty impressive when seen at Leopardstown the kind of horses to focus on I suppose are or, or to assume that's what I want to do at this point in time. Let's assume appreciate it wins. Uh, and obviously that will mean different things for different form lines for races to come. Bally Adam looks likely to, uh, well, I'm not sure if he's, yeah, possibly running this. He's got a couple of entries uh, as well, I think. Um, and I'll touch on him on a moment. Uh, well, I can, obviously he's moved to Gordon Elliott and there's a, a question with, um, yeah, I mean, they, I'm not sure if Henry de Bromhead has said the Supreme is going to be the one. He's also in the Ballymore. Um, it looks like possibly the Supreme. Um, but clearly their form ties in together here. Um, you've got Hook up down here who looks likely to go in the Mares. Um, and I think is possibly favourite. The Mares hurdle kind of four, five to one. Clearly, if uh, any of these three run well and or dominate the Supreme here, that's going to be a boost uh, to her chances in what would be a much weaker race in the mares. And, you know, this was a half decent effort. Always, I think it's worth focusing on or putting some weight to form achieved in grade ones, especially novice grade ones. And if some horses have been able to stay up with the pace at all or have shown something until a certain point, especially those horses which are going to end up at a lesser level in the grade one of the festival, in particular in handicaps, uh, races like the Mayor's Hurdle. I know I've seen the odd thing around with her jumping, hookups jumping seems to be a big question for some, especially in the context that she's kind of five, six to one, but that's maybe something to consider um, as that race rolls around. Uh, irascible for Henry de Bromhead looks likely to run in the supreme and obviously you can take a closer look and try and work out i suppose why he would overturn the form with the front two here blue lord is maybe the one of interest i still don't know if not necessarily for this race um although possibly for this race if he runs in it but you will see that he's down in the county hurdle as well kind of a best price eight to one so they have options here um if they decide uh, to go down the handicapping route uh, and given his form between uh, well behind Bob Bollinger and obviously that ties in um, he looks likely to go in the Ballymore I think um, so you've got all these different form lines Blue Lord appreciate it Bally Adam Bob Bollinger tying in together uh, and depending on kind of who does well that's going to boost uh, the form line of some of these um, Blue Lord I think maybe possibly of some interest if he lines up in the Supreme, mainly because some of his better form before he came over to Willie's uh, was on decent ground, uh, which is worth noting. This will be the best ground he's run on this season. Um, he was uh, six lengths behind Appreciate It, having been uh, towards the rear, not exactly ideally placed. Um, and he was pretty keen if you watch that back. Seemed to jump well and stayed on, uh, but was no match for the front two in this. But that's he's clearly a horse of ability. Um, I'm not 100%. Uh, I'd need to check what official rating he's got. Um, it may be uh, more the case that handicaps are for him, but just this level of form. Of course, he's got no form or experience around Cheltenham, uh, but he's worth keeping an eye on. He might not do anything at this festival. Um, he may be an interesting each way bet in the Supreme if he lines up. He certainly may be, well, he would be of great interest in the county. Uh, if that's where, if he's not declared for the Supreme, um, you know, appreciate it uh, and Bally Adam then fight out this race. 
that's going to be a big boost to his form. Um, that will obviously, and if he runs well as well, uh, sorry, that if Bob Ollinger then runs well in his race also. Uh, so you've got all these different things to keep an eye on as the week progresses and certainly from this first race. But Blue Lord may appreciate uh, a stronger pace, um, not being keen, uh, the better ground, uh, or all reasons why possibly he might get closer to appreciate it. Or certainly if he's dropped into a handicap, this grade one form and ability to travel at pace and be in and around horses which are rated much higher or certainly would be if they perform in this race uh, are clearly big positives as well so that's something to keep an eye on and a horse to keep an eye on you would think he is going to win more races just a question of uh, where and when um so you've got those kind of form lines tying in the harry fry horse there's not much to shout about with him as yet his races haven't worked out that well um but of course if he does put in a decent performance here there may be a few other horses not necessarily that are going to run this week uh that it might be worth keeping an eye on i've touched on bally adam obviously some of their form uh, or his form with appreciate ties in in recent weeks uh bob ollinger looks likely uh to go for the ballymore and is well fancied kind of five to two uh favorite i think currently for that um so clearly backers of him in the ballymore on the wednesday uh, will want to see his form enhanced by appreciate it um and uh blue lord in particular so i was going to say this is the race i was going to focus on I'm doing this without any notes. I've kind of whizzed through a few times in my head and trying to remember uh, what I wanted to touch on. But clearly, um, you know, they all want to see Blue Lord run well, um, as an example, uh, certainly from their race last time out. Um, you know, he he was behind Fernie, Holly, Fernie Hollow sorry, uh, in November. Fernie Hollow's form ties in with Appreciate It, obviously, from that bumper and form earlier in the season as well. So, all of these different form lines crossing over. Um, again, this is a uh, the Lay Laws of Nace, a grade one. Bob Bollinger, very impressive. Blue Lord, this was the race, sorry, this was the one where he was, um, uh, yeah, this couple of starts ago, he was keen again. Um, so if he's in, if he does run in the county, he'll have had, you know, both appreciate it and Bob Bollinger will have run uh, before him I think come that race um, but it depends what they do uh, if he runs in the Supreme that might be some indication of what Willie thinks um, who knows but you know there's again you can see what I'm getting at in terms of depending on what horses run well in this Supreme maybe worth noting this is a horse I wanted to touch on uh, having watched some of the videos back um, Gavin Cromwell's Gavin Nacko, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce his name, but he's of interest. Again, will be fascinating to see how these two horses in front of them, him in the Laylaws, get on. Um, and what is he entered in? Uh, he's entered in the Coral Cup. He seems to be shorter, a shorter price, if these prices are correct. Um, in the Martin Pipe, both of them, uh, two mile four on the new course, a stiffer test of stamina. Wednesday, the Coral two mile five on the old course, uh, a bit more emphasis on speed, um, being able to hold a position. Um, but he's of some interest given he has that kind of profile which I've talked about. Um, he doesn't have Cheltenham form, uh, which is obviously always a positive. I should say, in terms of festival form being a positive. Obviously, there's the track element and that ability to travel and hold a position at pace, which is crucial in any festival race, both the, the grade ones and the handicaps. Being able to hold a position and jump at pace and being a strong traveller is a positive, but also being able to switch off as well. Um, the lack of a big crowd. There's going to be some horses, I suspect, that in previous years would have boiled over because of the crowd and the circumstances and the noise and just the general atmosphere and the cheering. And, you know, that won't be an excuse for some horses this year. And, uh, you know, more horses may give their running, especially the younger, inexperienced horses. So that, having not experienced Cheltenham form in that sense or a festival in that sense, um, is going to be a bit different from previous years. 
and maybe less weight put on that. But of course, festival form in terms of uh, is always a positive, even without that kind of crowd uh, an atmosphere point. Um, but what I would say about Gavin William, uh, Gavin Cromwell's horse here is he has form in big fields. So whenever you're looking through, especially in some of the handicap hurdles, forming kind of big maiden hurdles especially in Ireland normally gives an indication that you can jump uh, jump and travel at pace it obviously indicates as well that you do not mind the hustle and bustle of a big field and what you can sometimes see is horses that have gone well or run well in big main hurdles and uh, you can see his form ties in that Elliot horse I just touched on as well um, from this Punchestown race in particular um, but you can, yes, horses that have formed there and then they run in smaller fields, which may not suit as much. Again, Nace, he, run, he won a kind of big field fairly impress, impressively there, maiden hurdle. That, again, just an example of that ability to handle the hustle and bustle of a big field, um, you know, to run your race, to switch off, to settle, which some might need the strong pace for a big field. And then you can run in, you both run in smaller field races, which may not suit some races because the tempos can be completely different. And some of these are kind of grade one and grade two novice affairs, which are clearly decent races anyway. Um, but he ran a, a solid third uh, behind these two very good half decent horses in the Laylaws of Nace. That indicates some ability. Um, and that from the mark he's got, he may be well handicapped. He dropped to two miles here which didn't seem to suit, but you can watch that race back and he clattered the second hurdle. Um, hopefully he learns from that, but he lost his position and, uh, you know, he stayed on. Uh, it could be that two miles was short enough there and he kept on and ran his race. So I can see why he's been ended over two and a half mile races. Um, better ground might also be a reason for improvement. So he's a, he's a horse, uh, whether or not for this festival or another one, that could be worth keeping an eye on and one when I was doing some video watching in recent days and trying to get on top of this thinking which I'm kind of going through at the moment was a horse which looked of mild interest who might be well suited to a festival handicap hurdle setup given some of those things I've mentioned uh, there in terms of his full mind so again if Blue Lord and then Bob Ollinger in the in the Ballymore run well that's clearly a boost to his form and that he might be one of those horses which depending on how these novice hurdles go people latch on to for the end of the week and could be the sort you would want to get on earlier than you may otherwise have done because the price clearly might um, come in a fair bit or it might not we shall see um, so yeah, that's a kind of interesting form line and observation, I think. Obviously, that uh, that's all the Irish chat. I should mention Saw and Glory. Uh, John Joe sounded a bit lukewarm that he may not even run in this race, but clearly the better fair hurdle. As we look at this, we do not know if this is good form or not as yet because nothing has run from it since. Clearly, um, fans and uh, connections of 50 ball would like Soaring Glory to run well. So if he does line up in the Supreme and if he wins or he's in the places or he's bang there over the last, that's going to, and you know, in and around these good horses up here, that is going to be a boost, uh, obviously for Soaring Glory himself, but also for horses who ran in the Betfair hurdle. None more than Gary Moores, whose starting position was a bit further back than Soaring Glory's at the time. He's a horse worth noting anyway i think um and you've got others down here i'm not quite sure how many may take up uh festival runs guide your dreams for nigel twist and davis looks like he needs two and a half miles already as an aside whether or not he is quick enough can hold a position uh, or has enough in hand for a festival handicap i'm not quite sure but he certainly wants further than two miles um so you know there's different things you can take from there obviously soaring glory's form ties in with brave man's game um and you know brave man's game supporters in the Ballymore will be if soaring glory does run will be wanting him to run well in this race now if he doesn't if he can't lay a glove on bally adam and appreciate it in particular what does that mean for brave man's games form does that mean anything they're two different horses obviously they you know progress at different rates um etc my drogo i suppose uh franked that form at kelso last weekend so there's different things we can pick up there if this is a good 
good to soft ground on day one. Uh, I think there's some who think Soaring Glory could possibly have more speed and more gears than appreciate it, which seems to be what some people are kind of wanting to take appreciate it on is because of that those concerns on the new on the old course tighter uh, better ground whether or not he'll have the toe of some of these um so that's something to consider also but that's the kind of thing depending on who else lines up in the supreme who may run well who may run in the places if you have the time you know to go through some of those races and the results as they're developing to see if the form ties in with anything else that may be cropping up as the week progresses so you know i've spent quite a lot of time on the supreme there i think i've touched on uh you know the things i wanted to and i probably will now spend the rest of the video repeating similar themes um but i'll try and keep it uh shorter and snappy but i think the supreme is the one uh which clearly does tie in a fair bit of form and a possible a couple of interesting handicappers depending on the races they uh line up in as well um we have the arkle uh this is of some interest um Anergumin, i think is that how you pronounce his name uh the willie mullins horse um <laughs> uh there seems to be some differences on how you pronounce him but you know, this looks to be on paper between Shiskin and the Mullins Beast. Uh, Old Man Cowind may try and lead them for a bit. Uh, his jumping was so, so last time out, but kind of on form. Um, you know, these two seem to be the ones to focus on. Uh, I will mention, I mean, you've got a couple down here uh, who look likely they might line up in this race. Captain Guinness, uh, he was going well in last year's Supreme. Um, when brought down uh, so he has festival form and ability to go at speed his um, chase season hasn't gone too well there's the odd uh, question about his jumping possibly uh, although he did very well at Punchestown in heavy um, he was eight and a half lengths behind the second favorite in this two starts ago um, which is interesting still getting experience and he was upsides um, both neither jockey neither rachel or paul had asked their horses any question um one length seconds three out press leader when fell two out and that was still a fair way from home at leopardstown uh, as they turned for home um but it seemed a bit of a novice error but he was going to be upsides uh willie mullins horse and who knows what would have happened there um i would have thought he would have been the one chasing him home in second then you're kind of looking at price disparities and you can maybe make your own judgment coming into a, a festival chase on the back of a fall of course is never ideal um but you know is is there each way juice there or does that make him more interesting uh given the form that uh, was going to tie in here and you know some of you may be big shishkin fans and think it doesn't matter what either of those two do because Shiskin's just in a different parish. Of course, now we have, uh, you know, the Tizards of El Dorado Allen. They'll be hoping Shiskin runs well. He obviously put him firmly in his place, but, you know, 149 going into this, 162 going into this. Um, so, you know, a clear dispar uh, disparity on ability. But, you know, the Allen fans will be wanting Shishkin to run his way race, and that would be a boost for his form. And he's got an entry in uh, the stable plate up to two and a half, which is a trip he's never tried. Also, the grand annual, he's got course form as well. Are the Tizards coming into life, or is he going to be one for Aintree? But again, you know, this is a horse which has shown grade two or grade one, in this case, grade two form, but behind what looks like or is a proper grade one novice. Um, form and when one of those rocks up in handicaps uh, whose form is behind horses such as Shishkin they're always worth a second glance whether that's at Cheltenham or Aintree or another handicap down the line um, so that's something possibly uh, to note down there um, Franco de Port his form ties in with the Willie Mullins second favourite in this uh, was he in a uh, no yeah he made a bad mistake also uh, at the third that kind of knocked the stuffing out of him a bit and dropped him back would he have been in there pitching with captain guinness chasing him home in this race would he have been closer than 10 lengths would he and captain guinness have been within two or three lengths of the willie mullins horse would they have had to really work harder um you know they're all different questions and you know this is a different race a different pace setup different ground different track 
are they reasons why some of these form lines could be turned on their head is the price disparity correct etc so you know there's different things to think of there he was pulled up at cheltenham um yeah far too keen it seems that day uh, but again uh some ability um he might be better on better ground you know all these different things to consider uh horses that run at leopardstown and leopardstown form is always worth uh, plenty of weight because horses that run there do produce plenty of subsequent winners on their next start that ran at leopardstown on the on their last start before run rocking up at the festival um so yeah that that's kind of all i want to say on this particular race i think i job isn't to steer you i don't think i've steered myself any particular way um but there may be a couple of interesting outsiders to uh deliberate given their form tying in with the second favorite or of course these two are just going to be battling it out over the last which may well be the case and we shall see which horse comes out on top um so that's the article um what do i want to say about uh the ultima um as that loads uh I mean, there's a few interesting horses in here, maybe. Um, there's some form lines of mild interest. Um, yeah, this sorts itself out by where the market is at the moment. Um, I suppose I did just want to touch on I write. Obviously, there's horses in here which are not going to be running. I don't think Remastered is. I don't think, obviously, Cloth Cap isn't. Um, but uh, I suppose I will just focus on I write's form lines. Um, because looking through, uh, there's a case to be made, as I've started to do so, <laughs> um, and you might sense where I may be leaning, we shall see, um, that his form lines today, especially out of the British challenges, I write one for the team, Lieutenant Rocco, happy-go-lucky, in terms of those above him in the market at the moment, and there's still plenty of, you know, de final declarations aren't out yet, of course, um, but, you know, that form behind Cloth Cap and chasing him home at Newbury in the Hennessy, or what was the Hennessy, the Labrook now, that's clearly been boosted by Cloth Cap, who's now officially rated in the 160s, um, you know, so he was chasing home a horse there who had at least 20 pounds in hand, it would appear, 25 pounds in hand, uh, jumper's bumper there, then the Doncaster race, and there's a form line here I just want to touch on, you know, taking risks, a grand old servant, Scottish national winner, uh, rehearsal chase winner, decent horse, even for his age. I write, uh, the jockey dropped his whip three out. Um, he stayed on there as if he would like further than 24 furlongs and, you know, would 25 furlongs with a horse that can hold his position, who's a very good jumper, who has very good form this season. The old course, favouring your favouring a bit of speed, that ability to hold a position near the front or just off the pace. You certainly don't want to be too far back, in my view. Um, or if you are, you need them to go pretty hard up front. Um, and that 25 furlongs with that climb to the line, uh, is that going to suit him? Possibly. Uh, this race is half decent. The front three were miles clear here. I want to touch on Captain Nord. Um, I'm not sure uh, what's he entered in. Oh, yeah. Um, don't think he's running. No, he's not going to run at the festival. Um, but he his form turns in with Royal Pagai, who is the current favourite for the National Hunt Chase. Um, you know, so there are some form lines that cross over there. Obviously, that ties in with I right in the sky bet. Um, he didn't run too bad, uh, too well at Kempton on good. Did that? Yeah, he jumped left. Maybe on that ground at the pace they went, uh, he was taken off his feet a bit. Um, I, you know, I can't say. Yeah, maybe he needs to go back left-handed. Although he did run well at Kempton in softer ground in December. He still looks like one four two is workable in some sort of race, but in any case, he's run quite a few hard races before that. But it is that Royal Pagai form lines I just want to touch on, so that's something to keep an eye on as well as the week progresses. Um, so yeah, I think for the ultimate chase at this stage, and I'm still kind of deliberating, uh, and I haven't been anywhere near through. And we'll see with these handicaps. I kind of like to wait for 48 decks, I suppose, because you don't know who's definitely going to run up. I like I said at the start, I still don't know definitely what the ground is going to be, um, and who turns up. Obviously, affects pace, affects race setup, and various different things. Um, I won't touch on the others as such, although there's some uh, okay form lines to a point that have been franked, but we'll move on because I'm ticking around to half an hour which is probably uh, long enough isn't it what do I want to say about the champion hurdle um 
not too much as such. Like I said, you can, you know, you can pick up these races if Honeysuckle bolts up. Um, you know, are there any other horse we want to take forward? Uh, again, there's a question some think about whether 16 furlongs around here on if it is good, good to soft, whether or not she's going to have the gears. Could she get outpaced? I believe um, Barry Garrity was quite strong on her being his lay um, when he was asked for one on there on the fence preview, which is a half decent watch. Um, and yes, there's different things you can you can pick up on. Epitante, is she going to return to a form of her demolition job in this race last year? Uh, you would think in conditions she would, if she did, she's clearly, well, she's probably the one to beat, actually. If she returned to that form, we've got Goshen, which is interesting, although his form lines are, you know, are questionable to a point. But then if he bolts up here, that's a boost for Song for someone who I don't think is going to run at Cheltenham, but possibly Aintree. Um, so, you know, you've got different bits and pieces. Uh, you know, it looks to be the market is clearly dominated by the top three in the market at the moment. Um, or I should say the market's dominated by these three. Um, but, you know, that, you know, you've got Silver Streak who beat Epitant. Is he the interesting each way option at the prices given his form at Kempton there? Uh, can that be taken literally? He wouldn't want the ground very soft. He may well have won at Cheltenham there. Um, you know, a few of the hurdles were doled off. There was a chicane. It got a bit messy. Um, but, you know, that was a career best RPR when he was last seen. Um, so, you know, you've got there's different things there you can pick up and flick on through. Uh, although I'm ticking around half an hour, which is more than long enough. Um, the Close Brothers Mares, uh, you know, that uh, concertista seems to be Plenty's um, kind of... Uh, banker for the week it seems uh, but again depending on what she does here does that form tie in with various different others it's not necessarily a race i want to touch on roxana questions about dropping back in trip again uh connections may want the ground softer there i know some are disappointed it doesn't look like she's taking up her position in the world hurdle um but uh you know you've got nikki henderson's um horse here as well but and her form ties in with different others also so you know there's that there's form lines you can look at there and touch on and as they progress through this uh through the week uh, and like i said you'll learn plenty or we will learn plenty i think possibly from the supreme uh, on various different things about how form can be turned on this head or what are the form lines to follow uh, we then got the boodles juvenile which of course happens before the triumph and it'll be interesting to see uh what happens um with some of these form lines if saint sam runs in the handicap here uh rather than the triumph and of course if he bolts up that is going to be um a kind of form boost for crelixiox um so you, again there's different form lines a bit like the supreme here bustleton is interesting in this handicap um i think uh, looks of some interest having flicked through um, just because of those different form lines that are crossing over and you've got Nichols horse here who's fairly lightly raced uh, kind of a bit of an unknown quantity although not been missed in the market of some interest um, I heard Willie Mullins might be leaning more towards uh, the triumph of Saint Sam but we shall see um, but again Zanahir's form and St. Sam's ties in. So if St. Sam doesn't rock up in this race uh, and Zana here uh, bolts up, it's something he may do. Um, but again, he's not certain to run in the uh, handicap as such. He might go for the main one, I think, um, the grade one. Uh, so, you know, there's lots of toing and froing at this stage, not knowing who's going to run where and if connections decide on the handicap or to go for the triumph. Um, and, you know, different form lines crossing over. But if Bustleton runs in the handicap, which I assume off 135, they'd probably be silly not to. Um, his form ties in with Xana here, Quilixiox. So again, connections of those horses, if they're running later in the week, will be pleased if Bustleton runs a good race in this handicap. Um, has the handicap been lenient with some of these juveniles? Um, I think that was a view that Tony Keenan expressed. He thought that... Well, he, he thinks the Irish might win 20 or more races this week. And, you know, he might be correct. We shall see. But, um, you know, this is an early indication on day one 
of how the British handicappers treated some of these Irish horses, especially these juveniles. Um, you know, there's different things we can pick up as the racing is going on that we can try and learn from within the week to try and improve our chances, increase our chances of success as the week goes on. But there's a few form lines that tie in through this horse and various different other ones as well through the week. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I just want to mention uh, on those particular races, these are all races I need to take a dive in and to see uh, what my unique stats and trends and the shortlist and different things and what they um, help highlight. Um, and then we've got the National Hunt Chase on the last day. So, oh, sorry, the last race of day one. Um, and uh, Venetia's is interesting, obviously well found in the market. Um he has never really raced on an undulating track. He's never raced at Cheltenham. Um, and the ground could be a lot quicker than he's used to. Uh, all of those reasons, although the Kempton, um, the ground wasn't too bad that day. Uh, and he posted an RPR 171 <laughs> when last seen. Um, are they reasons to take him on? Uh, they're clearly questions he has to answer. Uh, the track, namely. Um, and possibly quicker ground uh, and possibly going a pace he hasn't gone before but that's of interest galvin's of interest um uh, barry garrett he mentioned that he wondered if he was more a speed horse and whether this extra six furlongs may be of interest again he has festival form um you know so there's there's different form lines here if he runs well um so yeah it's always worth looking at those horses that run well and perform well um as the day and these races progress and see if any of the other horses uh, tie in although i'm sounding like a broken record and i'm aware i'm repeating myself now i will just touch on longhouse poet more as an example a bit like a horse i touched on before um let's just ignore he's a chaser and him in this race for a moment if he was running in handicap hurdles this would be the type of profile i may be trying to home in on and take positives for so he's clearly a good horse actually point to point yielding hacked up um good ground he beat monkfish in a bumper i find that interesting um but if this was a handicap hurdle like i said on a horse earlier in the video um you've got big field maiden hurdle novice hurdle form and actually some of this form has worked out okay You've then got from that big field experience and a reason why, having run in this season, for example, smaller fields, you may suddenly burst back into even more life or look better handicapped, especially if you're talking about handicappers, in a big field, strongly run festival race. Um, you've then got graded form, grade one form behind a proper horse in Envoy LN, um, Alexa Denae, good horse. Um, and so you've got form there. Uh, which highlights that you have ability and you have ability to go at grade one pace and to run well in a grade one. Um, that's over hurdles. And then you might this season, some you will, there will be handicap hurdles with similar profiles. This who are still staying in hurdles and running in maybe their first or second or third handicap hurdle, having not won one yet, but having similar form or ideas to what I've just talked about there. Uh, and some indication with RPRs above their current mark, for example, uh, and all those things tying in together to, uh, and to yeah, give positives or a positive reason for why they may do something in a festival handicap, especially handicap hurdles. Um, but switching back to this horse, he's obviously not running in the handicap hurdle. He's running in the handicap. Uh, so he's going to run in the National Hunt Chase, I think. Um, you know, he's run well over shorter distances, has shown some speed, some ability. And now he, you know, 25 furlongs heavy at punches down dour staying performance he beat run wild fred there who has since come second in the thieste chase behind coco beach the front two fairly well clear from a couple of half decent ones of the willie mullins yard um so you've got you know I've, having flicked through a couple of days ago and watched some videos and different things he was of mild interest for many of the reasons stated uh given his form and ability um and festival form or festival experience maybe this run came on the back of a fair few hard efforts i don't know i am intrigued that he seemed to have decent form on decent ground um 
Is it that he, and he could be, again, this may be the final thing I say as I tick around to 40 minutes, is he one of these horses that's run well on heavy, and you'll get horses that have run well on heavy and horses that haven't, who runs even better on decent ground? Um, I'm not quite sure if he needs a bog or whether or not that's been the reason for improvement. That's something to ponder. Um, but uh, he, at the prices, and you, when you're looking through races like this, as I talk at this stage, trainers... Yard are in form. He doesn't run many at Cheltenham. He's of potential interest, and you know it might be a horse to look at. Uh, you've then got next destination if he runs well. Uh, he's got one for the team um, who looks likely to run in the Ultima. His form now next destination fans will want one for the team to run well in the Ultima. I think to give that form a boost. He's obviously got the Fiddler on the Roof form here. I'm not quite sure on the level of this form, but Fiddler on the Roof fans, uh, I'm not quite sure where he is running um he's got an entry oh he's probably not got much chance in that um famous last words but you know he's on an okay mark is he won for a handicap at Aintree maybe but his fans or supporters or uh you know might be worth noting uh, how well next next destination goes in this for his form at a future date um so they're all the different things that idea of hot form and how these form lines build up uh i'm not quite sure uh, you know that that's an interesting and useful exercise and thing to know i'm not quite sure where pencil foot of lead is going to run but he has formed ties in with coco beach late this exhibition uh some other runners and races here um Escaria 10 might run in the handicap in the older but also uh so you know you've got various different form lines that build up uh but having ticked round of 40 minutes um i hope the time has flown by um but i hope also that i've said something that is of mild interest or may help you uh, attack next week if you like finding your own winners there's hopefully something to take away there whether or not it's some thinking about the types of profile to look at whether or not it's the types of for well specific form lines that i've mentioned or highlighted or things you can look at but i find that kind of interesting um i might not play in the supreme financial of course as always various bookmakers do money back offers on race one i think skybet probably lead the way on that um but uh you know, there's various different things. Uh, you know, I will find the the Supreme Novices Hurdle interesting, even if I don't end up playing in it. Although you may have, um, you know, heard me talk about certain horses, which might interest me at prices depending on where they line up. Um, but you know, by by engaging in this type of thinking and some of the things I've discussed, it makes these sorts of races fascinating. For the rest of the festival and the rest of festival season, if you're talking Aintree and Punchestown, um, to see how some of these races and form lines work out. And I find that kind of thing uh, fascinating, um, which is probably why I like the sport, um, because it is complex in that way. And there's so many different things to think about. Um, but like I said, day one, the ground, the pace, the track, uh, you know, some form on day one and through the week will get turned on its head from recent weeks because of the conditions, because of the unique conditions, big fields, the pace, the better ground. Um, horses being able to settle off stronger paces where they haven't done so far this season in small field, heavy ground races, etc. Um, but looking at some of those things I've touched on, some big field form, maiden hurdles, novice hurdles, graded form, grade one, grade two form, the horses they've been in and around, festival form, etc. Um, but I am repeating myself, but it's always worthwhile doing to try and hammer it home hammer those points home in my own head um but yes hopefully i will uh, well I'll shut up now um there will be an offer as always if you're listening to this and you're not already a member you'll be able to join the racing to profit community the racing to profit tribe for cheltenham week for just nine pounds 99 from now oh uh, well, i say now not from now from thursday um thursday 10 a.m thursday the 11th of march from the morning 10 a.m you can get access for nine pounds 99 all the way through to the following sunday the 21st of march obviously covering festival week there's the midlands national um there's tips there's opinions you get all the stats qualifiers against my free uh, stats report which you've got uh the trend shortlists the qualifiers against trainer micro angles etc um but with that said I clearly have been talking for far too long, but I hope uh, those of you that have managed to get through to the end have found it of some 
interest. But with that said, I will leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. I'm slowly getting more and more excited about Cheltenham as it comes. And with any luck, can have one of my better stellar years of 2017 2018 which were balmy that's what i'll be working hard to do um but with that said thanks for watching uh best of luck next week whether you join uh my members club for the week or you like just picking out your own and uh, have joined another service whatever uh good luck with any of your bets i hope you have an enjoyable and profitable week and remember to keep it fun and um if you could all cheer home really super in the mayor's chase on the penultimate race of the festival on the Friday, um, that would be great. And hopefully your cheering efforts can make her run into a place. Um, but yes, this is Josh saying thanks for watching. And until the next time, bye for now.